the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for giving us yet another day in this, in your wonderful presence, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for this gift of life itself. Every morning we get up each new day, especially when we, we praise and worship you, Lord. When we gather like this each time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and one another. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the people you have put in our lives, Lord. They who come and tell us every day, and teach us more and more about you and show us, show, show love to us also. And as we lift this prayer to you, Lord, we ask for a continued awareness of your presence and power. Let the word come, Lord, be with us, consume us. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, teach us how to abide in Jesus. And to know our Savior, we must know his word. So let us all become, let us be consumed by this word, Lord. Help us, Lord, to listen attentively to every word, to understand it and program ourselves accordingly to what you, God, think. And as we practice doing God's word, we grow spiritually. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, this is the time that you have made for us to learn to elim elim eliminate all our fears, worry, everything, and just concentrate on your word, Lord. And its very roots with love that we have received by the power of the Holy Spirit and to release that same love in the lives of others. So here we are once again gathered together to receive more and more beautiful truths, Lord. Truths that will make an impact on our lives. And Lord, is the truth that's going to set us free. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You said, you said, I confess, Lord, you are the only way, the only truth, and the only life. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, my dear sisters and brothers of home, welcome to you all. Today, we are going to have some brothers and sisters of ours who are going to testify to the Lord's goodness, to what the Lord has done in our lives and how he has used us as his instruments to be a blessing in the lives of others. And you know, my brothers and sisters, every time, every time we get an opportunity in order to testify to what our God has done, both in our lives and how he has used us in, in being a blessing to the lives of others, you know, we are simply sowing a seed in the kingdom. We are simply sowing that word in the lives of others. And as we have studied in these last few days, especially, we have been learning that how we are all spiritual farmers and how we all need to sow that word. We don't need to sow that seed in the lives, of, first and foremost, in our own lives and then in the lives of those whom the Lord and the Holy Spirit will lead us to. So today we are going to have our brothers and sisters who are going to share their testimonies of what the Lord has done. And so I would like to begin by calling my brother Peter. Peter, you are the first one to share today. So go ahead, unmute yourself yes, good and evening. Share your testimony. Good evening, everybody, and praise good God. Good evening, yes. praise God. Uh, yeah, I, as I remember, I had told you about an accident that took place in Goa. My office boy, who he and his father were traveling to uh, Donamar and they met in a bike accident. Yes. Yes. Us, yeah, the, the, his father who fell on the right hand side and banged his head had a head injury was rushed to the hospital GMC and expired on 28th of September it was on Tuesday okay. after okay. the 28th September 28th <clears throat> hello can you hear me yes. hello hello 
Peter, we can hear you, but we cannot yeah, see you. Yes, yes. So even we want to see you, Peter. Yes. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. We would like yeah, to Peter, see you. Peter, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah but so right, right. come on his own. Yeah. So what had happened was after that on the Sunday, twenty sixth, my colleague who he and myself used to always travel to office by bike on a bike. So he told me, Peter, okay. I think we should also use a helmet. I said, yes, look, okay. So on Monday, I took a second helmet and I we were drive, we were riding. I was riding. We had an appointment at uh, Nepensi Road, and we were at the signal of Tardeo, which uh, I was supposed to take a right and go to the uh, go to Kambala Hill that side and go down to Tardeo. Uh, I was at a signal waiting for the signal to get green. As soon as the signal got green, I I we I just moved. Suddenly, I saw on the left hand side of a person who had jumped the signal, came in a big and high speed, and immediately applied the brake, and both of and he banged uh, on my scooter on my front tire. I fell down. I mean, although we both had helmet, first time Savio, my colleague, wore the helmet for the first time. We, we, I fell down, and I was just under the bike because I was I was riding the bike. But my colleague Savio, he flew about a meter and he banged his head onto the road. Luckily, he had a helmet, and nothing, nothing really happened to him. I like to praise and thank God that nothing happened to him. And luckily, that that first day that he wore the helmet, and we met in an accident, and we both were safe, and we came home properly. Praise God. Praise God. Thank Thanks. God. So, so, so tell me, so tell me, Peter. You said that you know you were going on this helmet, and you found that you know the your 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 colleague Savio survived this particular you know this situation. But uh, yeah. more than you know surviving the situation, what would you attribute? What would you attribute as the as the reason why this particular you know thing really happened in your life? What was the reason you believe? The reason is whenever I'm riding the bike, and in case there is a, I mean, I mean, always, I always sing a song, like you know, Jesus, you are my salvation. Jesus, you are my inspiration. Okay, I just go on singing, you know, when I'm uh, alone or on the bike, someone is there, and we don't talk to each other. And Praise then God. sometimes I just sing in my mind, uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. So I think there was something that. God want to tell us. Okay, fine. It's high time. Y'all, both of y'all wear, wear a helmet, which is very good. And it was otherwise the entire game would have come on me. That is something. Would have... Yeah. What what I'm what what I'm saying, Peter, is you know, I, all you must have gone on the scooter so many times before. You might have had. You know, accidents before this time. You you fell off the bike. Yeah, this time you fell off the bike. You know, I mean, whatever we do, I mean, said, okay, I said yes, we are fine. So I said, yeah, I banged my head onto the road. Luckily, we tried to the helmet for the first time. I said, good. So I said that is what exactly the helmets are meant for. Then the cop yeah. the, took the other the the, the the other rider was a young guy, maybe twenty four years old. Then he asked me, you want to file a police case? No, I said, okay. I said, I told that. I said, never, never do such things. I said, today because of the helmet, my colleague is safe. That is God knows what would have happened, and I pray so, and thank so God. So you're saying, Egypt, said, so you're saying, you so safe. you're saying, Peter, that Savio also was wearing a helmet thank that day. Hello, hello. So, uh, Peter, are you saying that even Savio was wearing a helmet hello, that hello, day? Hello, hello. <laughs> can, can you, you all me? hear? Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Peter, I I think there is a little problem with your internet. Can you hear me? Hello, Peter. Peter, can you hear me? I think we lost Peter there. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll come back to Peter after some time. But uh, am I audible? Peter, yeah, now you're audible, Peter. What I wanted to ask you was, you know, you said that you know Savio hurt his head. Was he wearing a helmet as well? Okay, Peter. I think we'll have to we'll have to come uh, let's talk about it after some time. 
yeah you'll have to come back after some time we cannot hear you I, doesn't matter i can't doesn't i can't hear okay okay doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter we we'll, we'll just leave it right now he told you he has got a new helmet for him no praise god praise god we'll we'll get we'll talk to peter after some time okay our next sharer is sister anna sister anna you can unmute yourself and you yes, can share brother. us your testimony i can you hear me yes can you hear me yes yes you're clear you're clear go ahead praise god praise god praise god uh, one of my student was admitted on uh, in gmc on 25th of september for dengue fever and as a result he was his parent was not able to collect the uh, the question paper which we uh submitted uh, which the parents are supposed to collect it uh, monthly on a monthly basis so i was uh, so i got connected to the parent and she said like uh, the boy is suffering from dengue fever and so i sent her some scriptures to confess uh, those scriptures say i am uh, the body of christ like edgar the boy's name is edgar so edgar is a body of christ satan sickness has no place and power of me uh, and uh, <clears throat> the spirit of the lord is upon edgar uh, jesus has anointed him and uh, set him free completely and there was one more scripture which i asked which i sent it on whatsapp for the mother to confess so it was that day was okay for the boy the fever was okay but the next day then the the fever went high so the mother was a little a little panic like little upset so she called me up and she said teacher like the fever is high uh, please uh, do something so uh, as i was in the uh, at my workplace so i prayed over the boy through a video call <coughs> praise god okay so she uh, get, got it like and she put the speak uh, this on a video call it was on speaker the child was uh, on high fever so it went for like uh, the two days it went on like from 26 25 26 and then suddenly the fever went to high the next day and he was immediately rushed to the icu because the fever was not going down and uh, uh, she didn't know what was happening so that she messaged me teacher is again admitted in icu so please uh, uh, do do something like so in meantime like i got connected to brother vincent and i kept informed about it what is happening so then brother vincent uh, send a prayer for the mother to confess so i messaged her the same prayer and i told as per the uh, guidance of brother in vincent like to uh, ask her to confess it 20 times but then like she was uh, she read it but i was not sure whether she had confessed it so i again messaged brother like brother i will do it for her herself i'll ask the mother to confess along with me as i was doing the confessions for my for my mother itself like so but that day i was not able to get connected to her because i was busy at my workplace so evening again i got a call that the fever was too high and it had reached his brain and he was he started getting fits so the mother was very much uh, panicking state like uh, she didn't know like uh, of course not she knew that she trusted the lord because she believed that the lord will heal her jesus is going to heal her so again i called up brother i told about i messaged brother then uh, we try to i try to get <coughs> connected to her but i couldn't get it so finally like brother asked me to do a video con- uh, conference call okay uh, it was late at night it was i think after 9:30 and it was pouring very heavily over there and uh, i was trying to get a connected uh, but the connection was getting lost meantime the doctors were trying to uh, in this 2 3 uh, two days the child was swollen uh, was his body was completely swollen up with water because there was water filled up in his body and the doctors uh, were trying to extract the excess water he had completely blown up uh, in this 2 3 days that uh, he was admitted in icu uh, in gmc so uh, i got them connected through video co- uh, conference and brother was there on the phone call and the parents here but our connection was getting lost and we were brother tried 
we brother got it connected and he gave them the word uh, like in konkani since they are goans and uh, because they had no understanding of the word they had to be taught and to be they had to believe that god has already jesus is already borne our sickness every pain of us on the cross and it's already finished only we have to praise and thank that we have already received the healing so that understanding like brother gave to them uh, on the phone both the parents and uh, inside the doctors were trying to remove the water out of the from the child's body and here outside the parents were like uh, given the understanding uh, by brother over the phone so uh, the connection was getting lost very often but like finally like we uh, brother could give them uh, brother was a uh, brother gave the understanding of the word and they were completely got to the word uh, they could comprehend they could believe and they made to they were told to confess the scriptures uh, Uh, for for the for edgar especially <clears throat> and then the next day so uh, the full night they were confessing that scripture and uh, the next day again the situation was the same there was no improvement and so what the mother decided is to call the pa- local parish priest uh, to pray over the child so praise god i usually i uh, yeah, usually i got uh, i called them up just to find out how is edgar's uh, situation so she said teacher i am come to call the parish priest uh, to pray over him if you can you also come so i was also a little puzzled like uh, now she is calling me and i don't know what was the real situation like so i meantime uh, immediately i called a brother and i asked what to do then brother said like please go and pray over him so uh, i took the permission from the principal uh, who is a nun so she said okay fine if you are going to see him i'll also accompany you so both of us went to see the boy in the icu but in the icu as uh, restrictions are uh, uh, there oh, visitors are not allowed unless you have uh, a someone whom you know over there or you have to take a permission so we both reached the hospital over there and um, so principal was allowed to enter the icu she, the mother managed to speak to one nurse or i don't know the doctor and she went inside and uh, she spoke to the nurse and uh, got to know what is the situation of the boy and then she came out but here in my mind i was uh, i wanted i had a mission to pray over the boy and since visitors are not allowed now how am i supposed to go in uh, was a, uh, like a question like but i knew that i am not going to go empty hand uh, god is going to make a way and luckily god opened a way for me i saw a for me a nurse who was from my hometown and i had not me- we had not met each other for quite many years so i just hey, popped Scott. into the icu uh, the security was there so i just called up that nurse and i said do you know me i just pull my mask and i say i am fiona and my my second name and you are cynthia right yes she said so can i please pray over edgar i said she told me please said come oh, oh, to pray over him i said please allow me uh, just few minutes i said i'll just go in and pray over the boy okay she said so immediately i got in the icu um, meanwhile my uh, my principal was uh, beh- uh, outside the icu taking care of my bags so i went inside i uh, asked the parents both the mother and the father was there i asked them please uh, place your hands over the child and let's start uh, praying and i asked them to confess the same scripture what uh, was given what was told them to confess by brother vincent so they kept on uh, confessing and i later i went in tongues and uh, it was such a wonderful experience because as i was going in tongues i could see the changes happening in the boy like he was uh, uh, unconscious but as the uh, pray i was once in going in tongues like he re- he was reacting to it as if like the spirit was uh, uh, upon the it was flowing within uh, over the child 
and he was getting uh, showing something some changes and so the parents had to like stop in between i said okay never mind like uh, you just do it like <clears throat> just try to pet the child okay and don't worry about anything you just focus on the scriptures nothing to worry just confess the scriptures so it went on and uh, nearly for around 40 minutes i was there in the icu uh, praying or uh, this like praying over the child so then i came out and then i was very much grateful because uh, more importantly because in the icu no visitors uh, were allowed and uh, i was i didn't have any one coming to me and telling me okay you can go you can please leave uh, it's time up uh, oh, your time is up like so there was no any obstructions over there as if the lord took control of that situation and then the next day like the child uh, was imp- uh, was improving finally then he was shifted to the ward on uh, 1st of uh, october <clears throat> so it was a, a very uh, major this like dra- uh, the faith of the parents in the ward uh, helped uh, really the child to recover faster i would say and now he's completely uh, recovered and he's brought back home he's discharged from the hospital and i praise god for that and i praise yes, god that god, god is uh, god is really uh, using me uh, like and uh, it's through the ins- uh, help of brother vincent like i was able to reach out to the student and uh, bring uh, this one family more closer in, uh, to god like to know the word praise you jesus praise god praise god anna now i want to ask you something i want to ask you something remember when the first time the parents were all calling you in fact yes, they were brother. not calling a doctor they were not calling the priest they were not calling anybody else what was the reason that the parents were calling you you're only the teacher yes you're only the teacher and and that's your student you know in school yes. you're a 60 year old boy Yes. every time the fever was going up every time the fever was you know climbing up every time there was some the situation was getting from bad to worse yes. they were only calling yeah. you and inform you tell me what was the reason first and foremost i'm going to ask you a lot of things because there's so much to learn from your testimony first and foremost the parents keep calling you all the time this is what is happening this is how the situation is uh, yes. you know his, his fever is getting bad and and they are keeping you updated all the time because what is the reason why they picked you only up as the teacher why could they not pick up the principal or pick up a priest or pick up other other um, other teachers why were they calling you only tell me anna wh- why is that what is the reason uh, for that reason brother like because i think it was uh, they had more uh, uh, the connect uh, i uh, what uh, kind of yeah it was yeah. Uh, it i was completely new for them and the boy also was new for me meaning i we, we didn't knew each other it was just only this year like we got introduced to one another but that faith i think so it's the there was something they found uh, that uh, um the spirit must uh, i think it's the holy spirit who uh, led them to contact me and uh, with without the intervention of the holy spirit i don't think so that the mother would call me and keep me in, uh, informed about it uh, uh. so there was no interaction between you and the parents of the boy before the only no. knew you as the teacher yes that yes the only reason the only reason that the holy spirit directed you know the parents to call you and 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 update you about their son isn't that right yes brother because we didn't know each other like it was just a formal like we uh, we just know the child and the parent and since it is uh, online uh, the classes have been held online only once a month like the parents come and collect the papers that's how we meet them and that's how that's how they were contacting you just with this online interaction yes brother isn't this r- truly a divine intervention yes that, you know, yes of, brother of, of, yeah of because the... i was really connected uh, how we got connected to one another is how it's like the holy spirit leading uh, uh, me to help them out to reach praise, them out praise uh, god give them the word god. because uh, and she was also more receptive brother as you were teaching them the word like she was getting the word uh, she was yeah. understanding 
correct now, now now see anna the, the the moment you finally you know remember a few days before you were keeping me informed about the boy and i only give you the word i said yes. to tell the parents to pray yes, the word yes. because because you know what at that yes, time yes. Both, instead of directly sitting and teaching the word to the parents it's important that you give them the word so that at least you understand whether the word is being they are being faithful to doing the word and you said yes, yes. they are praying the word they are praying yes. the word Yes. But eventually, when we connected to one another, we got connected mm. to the parents. Remember that night when it was yes, brother, yeah, I know. And, yes, and we yeah. Were, now, even though the word was given to them, and it was all given in Mark chapter eleven verses twenty eight, twenty three, Mark eleven twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. That prayer was all made, and it was told yes. them you not know, to speak. Right? That prayer yes. was always made in the past tense. Yes. That prayer was made in the past tense. It is already done. Already done. Was, Yeah, but what were the parents thinking at that time? Because what were the, the parents were thinking because Jesus is going to heal them in the Jesus future. Jesus is going to heal, correct? In the future, correct. yeah, exactly. So the parents had to shift their thinking from what they were believing before that God yes. is going to heal to what God has already done already for done for us. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the moment the mother particularly. Yes, yes, the father also got eventually. He also came into agreement. But eventually, when the mother and the father realized that on the cross of Calvary, Jesus has already healed us. He has already finished it for us. That's the time, you know, because the son was in ICU. He couldn't be. He couldn't pray. He was too young. He's only six years old. It was difficult to minister him directly. The yes. parents understood the formula. They understood the secret that even though. they had been praying to god to heal their son now they understood the truth that god has already healed their son healed their and son. you remember as we yes. were talking to them in konkani they were saying arka they were saying thank arka. you very much thank yeah. you jesus so thank you, they, jesus. they shifted their thinking from hope to faith yes they changed their thinking from hope to faith because faith. they were hoping that god would heal their son they were hoping and 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 literally when that situation became so bad where you know His fever started going to hundred and nine. Started having fits. His body was swollen with water. Yes. Then eventually, eventually, when the day you went to pray, they yes. had already called the priest. Priest they also. The priest. They yes. called the priest for what reason? Because that's what they call in Goa. They say yeah. this is the last sacrament. I do. I did ask the parent. Was it for the last sacrament? Like, but even for the last sacrament, also you need to have faith that brother, like. Even after receiving the parent, uh, the child is already recovered. That faith with the intention, Correct. so that also mat matter, right? Because if you are giving it the last sacrament, that is already uh, in uh, in the days uh, to come, like he will not be there with us. If they had it in their mind, then that would have not helped them. Exactly. So, so you know. So I was also is... very much confused, brother. Like I also when they said I'm calling the priest, I didn't. Know, Correct. I really Correct. didn't Correct. know what to say to them. Like now, uh, now, now you know, Anna. Here in Goa, they always call anointing of the sick. Of the sick. Anointing yes. of the sick as the in Konkani literally they say the last sacrament. Last sacrament. Oh. Because it is because in the order of. Nimana or Nimana sacrament. The, yeah, that is the last sacrament. So when you hear somebody saying last sacrament. That means it's time to go home. Are you are you But, understanding? Yes, nobody, brother. Nobody nobody realizes it is not the last sacrament. Yes, yes. It is only it's only in the order of that you can even take you even you can even take the anointing of the sick maybe one dozen times in in your yes, lifetime. Yes, yes. So it's not a only have to believe that it's already she, the boy is already healed. Exactly. So the so the question is, you know what people understand. the anointing of the sick as the last sacrament before they die yes brother and that, that is where the parents on the previous day or two days before when we connected we had given them the understanding we told them you know anointing of the sick is not the last sacrament anointing of the sick is a is a sacrament which is basically releasing anointing upon the pair upon the child or upon the yes. sick yes yes and, and when when they came to ask the priest and when you saw the hello for the and nurse has already the son yes. they would have actually by that time already quit believing they would have been preparing for their son's funeral or they would have been preparing for his for their son's death because his situation was bad 
Yes, but brother. The moment the parents began to believe the word, and then you be, you began to encourage them. You when they prayed over him, you released the anointing by praying over him. Now they got that spiritual backup. They got the spiritual support, and now finally, when they believed that, they saw the miracle because yes, they they believed it. Yes, the parents believed it. See, it, there is a time when you and I got involved. Yes, we prayed with them. We gave them understanding. You went and prayed over the boy, your own student, their son in the ICU. But at the end of the day, if the parents were not in faith, if the parents were not believing, even though you know the whole church prayed, even yes. though everybody prayed, right from North Pole to South Pole, do you think at the end of the day, if the parents were not in agreement or were not believing the word, would this miracle have happened? No, no, brother, no. It would not have happened. So many times when when miracles don't happen, everybody is praying. even the somebody has been prayed over and that and that miracle doesn't take place the question is not because the prayer was not answered because somebody close to the family did not believe the word did yes. not believe the word and here in the case of this boy his parents had to be in faith his parents had to believe his parents had to stay in faith despite the fact that they could see it was a very hopeless situation imagine yes. when he was when the boy went into fit 6 year old boy Yes. All swollen up with water. His uh, the temperature has reached his brain. He's getting fits. One hundred and nine temperature. I mean, in the natural, that situation looks terrible. It looks very bad. It looks hopeless. Yes. But the moment the parents understood the word, that's exactly what Sister Anna you did. God used you mightily. He used you mightily as not only as a teacher, but he used you mightily as you rightly said. to give the word to give the faith to the parents now that the parents have seen the the miracle of their son they have seen the healing of their son now can you imagine what is going to happen to that family that family is going to be rooted in the word they are going to be you know they will realize the power in god's word she is eagerly waiting brother to join your zoom meetings only i have to teach her now i have to go and show her how to get installed and i want to Please bring her <laughs> She is asking God. me where, where to attend brothers' meetings. She is asking. I said no, not physically on Zoom. I said, so I'll get you. I said uh, once I once you come home, I'll teach you how to come online and get uh, into Zoom meetings. Praise God! And you know, uh, Anna, the very fact that you as a teacher, you see, he's your student. I mean, yes, your brother. relationship with your student is you go to school and you come back and you know you could just after a prayer. but leaving your school asking your principal asking the sisters the sisters accompanying you to the icu yes. you going and praying for 40 minutes this yeah. only this would only happen when you are when you go beyond your relationship of a teacher student you know yes, when, 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 when you when you when you go exceed your relationship just between yes. a student you say i'm going to show love i'm going to show what i know now what i have learned about the word what yes. i have experienced god's love that love i'm going to help now this family to release and and you know anna you yes, and sir. ivan you and ivan have experienced god's love you have seen the glory of god you have seen how much the lord has set you free through the word and now yes, you wanted to use what you had received into the life of this family and today when you stand and testify it's only the goodness of the lord that we are hearing because see god has to reach out through you and me he has to reach out to somebody Yes. Somebody came and reached out to you. You received the word of God. You received the love of God through that understanding of the word. Now yes. you receive the word and you receive the love. Now you went out and you shared that word to your to those parents. They saw the glory. They saw the miracle in their son's healing. Such a supernatural healing when it was so yes. hopeless. And now that family is now going to be rooted. And imagine this boy, this parents, the other other siblings of this boy. all this family must be so much rooted in the word and i'm sure so many members of that same family they might have seen the miracle they might have been coming to the hospital and seeing what a critical situation it is but realized yes. through the word of god how god has shown the his glory to this family through you sister anna god bless you god bless god, you for being god such bless a, sir such Praise a blessing Jesus, such a blessing in the lives of this family praise god praise, Jesus. praise, praise god. god praise thank god you. thank you thank jesus, you, jesus. thank you jesus god is thank an awesome jesus. god you know Praise when we god. get touched and we get healed and we receive something it's time for us to reach out we just cannot 
hold back. Sometimes it's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be difficult. It's going, there are going to be inconveniences. It's going to be probably during odd hours, during my work time, during my school time. But when there is love and you really want to reach out, nothing can stop you because that love is going to lead you to that particular family, to that particular household. And so much of great things are going to happen. Isn't yes, that wonderful? Brother. Yes, brother. Praise God. Praise awesome. God. Praise and God. one more thing, Praise brother. Like while yeah. we were, while we came out from the ICO, me and my principal, yeah. like, so she was questioning me, what do you think uh, about the situation? Like we know it's a dengue fever and it's too high. He, he's very serious. So I just kept. I did not even uh, confess any negative because I did not wanted to cancel anything what had happened in uh, supernaturally over there. So yeah. I just told my principal sister he's already healed there's nothing to worry now I said I this is Praise what I just told, told my principal <laughs> because she was looking Praise into the God. physical but I, I was uh, looking into the supernatural believing what you in the under uh, this unseen now Anna what would it have done to the to the sisters to the sisters faith what would it do to the sisters faith of course uh, she 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 knows now that uh, i have already prayed and she knows that now already uh, i am into the this life so definitely she uh, she will know but she will not show it also after all she is a principal and a nun right and i am yeah. just a lay person so it will be, it will take more time for her to realize this like. correct correct and 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 you know what uh, anna uh, when joseph was in egypt he was yes. in the house of Potiphar. He was a slave. Yet the Lord was with uh, with the Joseph. With Joseph. He was with Joseph. In the same way, even though you say to yourself, I'm just a small teacher. I'm just, you know, she's the principal. I'm just an ordinary person. Do you know that you are just like Joseph in that place? Because the yes. Lord is with you. And when the Lord is with you and he shows his glory through you, through so many people there, especially to the sister, to that family. You know what is happening? It's time yes, for you to be your, to meet to <coughs> get your promotion. It's time for your promotion in the kingdom. It's time yes, for you sir. to become the governor of Egypt. You know, Joseph, Joseph did not become governor of Egypt just in one day or two days. No, no. It took a long it time. It took for long him. He time. He was sold as a slave. He was sold as a slave. God was preparing him, isn't it, exactly, brother? During, exactly. During exactly. During those exactly. that phase, he's correct, more of correct. rejections, more of uh, so much of. Uh, uh, this like uh, uh, exactly. yeah exactly no acknowledgement nobody yes. acknowledged joseph. nobody acknowledged joseph nobody gave any credit to joseph credit, yes. nobody you know honored joseph joseph yes. was simply looking at that dream joseph was simply focused on the lord joseph was simply looking at what god had put into his heart and he was just interested in committing himself to God and doing what God had called him to do, despite the rejection, despite yes. people ignoring him, despite people rejecting him. In the end, Joseph yes. became governor of Egypt. And you know, Anna, as yes, you rightly brother. just now said, you may you may probably not realize it. You may not even realize it. But I'll tell you what: what you have done right now, especially when you you know became a blessing to your to your student. You became a blessing to the to the nun, to the principal in your in your school because she also came. She also saw the glory. You know yes. what? Yes. You you just don't focus on whether she acknowledged you, whether yes, she yes, or no, you know no. got changed. You just do what the Lord has Lord called has, you to do. Yes, and brother. You know what? When when you do what God has called you, as God in His own time is going to more you and is going to you know that that, that privilege. Which, which belongs praise God praise, praise God, God yeah thank you praise Jesus yeah. praise God praise God praise God thank you brother God you God it is God true. bless you it is wonderful really wonderful wonderful testimony praise God praise God praise God and you know what my dear sisters and brothers as you are as you are all hearing right now this testimony of Anna you know some sometimes we don't even realize how how the lord has uh, you know uses us we, it, it, uh, for the miracle when out only when waking up brother can't hear you nicely
We can't hear you at all. Because you know what? Many are times. Your line is gone. Is gone. Can you all hear me? You no, you're breaking up. Praise God. Yeah. Praise now. God. Can you hear me now? Can you yes, hear me now? Yes. 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 Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. So, yeah. So, so thank you, Sister Anna. Thank you so much for being blessing in the most important. God, who's faithful to us, He will always do the great things in our life. Amen. 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 I really want to thank you for being a blessing in the kingdom by, you know, reaching out to this family, especially at this time, and for being such a mighty witness, really a mighty witness to the Lord. Praise thank God. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So, thank you, Sister Anna, for that beautiful testimony. Uh, you know what? Um, Every time when you come and testify, you know, especially things like this, not just, you know, people getting healed, but the process, the battle, the, the challenges. And, you know, even at times there can be so many discouragements. And yet, when we persist, we don't look at the scene. We look at the unseen and we continue to do what God has called us to do. In the end, we will always see the glory. I was just, I was just thinking, Anna, when she called that night, we were trying to contact the parents and how many times the phone just got disconnected. At least five, six times it got disconnected, but we just kept on connecting. We kept on connecting because our goal was to get the parents into faith. Our goal was to, you know, uh, see that the parents, you know, understand the word. And once they got the understanding of the word, praise God, that's where the miracle took place. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Anna. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you too, brother. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, our next sharer is my sister Joyce. Sister Joyce, you are our next sharer. Go ahead and tell yeah. us what the Lord has done. Is there anyone else? Because mine is not that important. Like, I mean, not so. Anyways, I want to uh, just um, teach something. Just... Uh, spread some of the you know teachings which you had given us the other day I was um, thinking of that because actually I was at a bus stop at the bus stop and a lady an Afghanistan lady I knew she was Indian I didn't know she was from Afghanistan she had two little children one small little girl and a boy and they gave me a seat to sit you know and she made her son get up and and I said, how sweet of her. And I sat. And so I got talking to her. And I just said, that you, I like your pair of shoes. Where did you get it from? And she said, you want it? I, I, I give it to you. If you give me something to wear, I, I'll give you these shoes. She said, so sweet. And I was so touched. And I said, thank you so much, sister. Where are you from? She said, I'm from Afghanistan. So I said, how long have you been here? She said, only three months because of the trouble there. And her husband was an interpreter for the army. So they managed to get them out, you know. And she's, then I got talking to her and I took her number. And I said, see, God sent me. I sent you side of me. And I'm, I'm going to... Sister Joyce, there was a bit of a problem with the internet. Go ahead. Continue with your testimony. So that girl was from Afghanistan and they had just got out from about three months she has come. And she's got two little kids. So like I took her number and I told her 
she told me she was having a problem with the house where she was and they have given them a house with a hole in the le- there's leakage in the roof and things like that. so i said oh god sent me here you know to to help you now you got to give me your number and um, call on me for anything anything you need and from the time i've come home i'm only thinking of that girl and thinking of her kids and i i, I don't want to do anything and i made a call to twice but i cannot get her number and then i was thinking you know brother how sweet she, she like normally i used to always think that these muslims come here now the afghanistan so many have come into australia these like uh, they have been rescued like they are actually aussies they've helped the aussies so like the army and all that they got them out and so i was thinking to myself so many of these muslims will come and we don't know and i had like bitter experiences with them in india you know so when you were talking about offense i said how god showed me there that that lady was so nice to me she said take these shoes take these shoes and my heart melted and then i thought of you were telling us the other day that two people get equal amount of money that's a gift grace of god and you know like one spends it for the love of others to make others happy and one fellow takes the money and holds it you know so grace is like that god has given us so much of it and then if i keep it and you know and that offense which i had also like against these muslims they would in india i had many bitter experiences so like i learned to hear that see how sweet she was she's a muslim girl she Great showed me love as soon as i told her that those that pair of shoes and i she said take it take it i give it to you sister i said no uh, you know and now i'm thinking of her all the time i have to you know you gave us that john 1726 jesus yes. said and i have yes. declared unto them thy name and i will declare it that the love where with thou has loved me may be in them and i in them so you know that is so lovely jesus actually now i want to give her love like you know i saw those two children and i'm calling her and calling her but maybe you know they don't trust us like strangers they just come from afghanistan you know and so they, at the end of the day sister joyce what you I'm have trying to call her to reach out to them you want to yeah, talk yeah, to them yeah. you want to show them the love now remember you should never get discouraged never get disappointed because whenever you're going to share love to somebody remember it's not that because you are going to give love that everybody is going to be open to receiving love you yes. can also have people yes. who will reject that love yes. not because not, not because they don't want to receive that love but because they're not sure see remember unless somebody has you know we we belong to a world where people always believe that nothing is free nobody ever realizes it free but when we come from the kingdom of god and we have experienced god's love for free when even when we did not deserve it now we want to give that love to everybody for free we are not you when going to count the cost when we are giving it but because people have never experienced they come from a different background where they have always grown into that into that mindset in society or the upbringing that nothing is for free you have to earn it you have to pay for it you have to work for it as a result when you begin to show that love they are just not prepared they they are uncomfortable with it but it should not stop you from doing what god has put into your heart nothing yes. should stop you from doing yes. what god has put into your it's heart. it's uh, worrying me for money i'm thinking i'll give her clothes i'll give her i got utensils i got so many things and i also want to give those children love praise god to... and you know what and you know what sister joyce the day you begin to become a friend to them the next stage will come where you can give them jesus as well i, I thought that one. that's important she will i told her that that you know sister i'm the god has put sent you here at the side of me i was thinking of the afghanistan people who are come in here but i didn't tell her in which way i was thinking i was not 
thinking in a good way that's why god purposely put it there at the side of me so that you know i also can take that offense out from my heart yes, which i had that yeah. these people should not enter here and how funny that was that was really the holy spirit taught me a good lesson and she offered me love she said take my shoes take it praise god i praise was shocked so, i'm a so you know you know what sister I boy is looking at your example now looking at your teacher. example of this afghan lady you know you know we all can learn from that you know when god sends people into our lives remember this when god sends people into our lives whether it is an afghan whether it is an indian whether it is an aussie whether it is an eskimo whether it is an aborigin remember you told us about an aborigin you know tribal yeah. or you know yeah. whatever god puts into our life there is a reason for that and god puts people into our life for a reason and even for a season and what happens is when somebody is put into our life that opportunity for us to give christ to them you know yes what you said is true we need to give them love we need to give them sandals we need to give them utensils that's all fine that's but that's not the goal the goal is to give christ so all these things that we want to give physically to somebody is only like a like a like a like an appetizer to the main course and the main course is giving jesus to them and once yes, we have given them jesus yes. once we have That's, given them you know the love of god and we have shown yes, them that god really the love, loves them the love of god they can we have received it freely and they also can receive freely now she she, she will recognize it you know in me she will see and she will automatically i wouldn't have to preach to her praise she god. will change praise god praise i thought god. that in my mind praise i don't have god. to preach so sister, sister joyce we want to hear your testimony this is half testimony now we yeah. want to hear the, the second part b of this testimony very soon oh, yes. maybe so the origin will, will connect you one day this yeah. our lady will connect yeah. with you one day and we'll hear the complete testimony from them that's why i didn't want to say it because i thought let me complete it and then i'll no, say no 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 it's good thing that you said it because now you'll be looking out for her you'll be looking out to complete what god has put into your life now this is your project with the help of the holy spirit to reach out to this person because this person has been connected to you for a reason amen amen Praise thank god. you god. god thank you jesus peter we need you to come back because you know what your testimony while you were sharing got disconnected because of the internet so i want you to come back and just tell us about your testimony again yes can you hear me now yes yes nice and clear peter it was it was not clear then i also was driving so i just got back home so you can share it now more clearly so we understand exactly what you were saying so basically uh, after that accident we decided that we all should i mean we when whenever claimed to uh, ride from office to uh, home to office we both used to wear helmets so after that accident we said okay everyone should have wear a helmet the pillion rider also so that was the first day i picked up the helmet and i gave it to sabu to wear it and as over the signal at tardeo going towards malabar hill and um, i i waited for the for the signal to get green as soon as it became green we moved ahead suddenly on the on the from the left i saw one one person a young boy jumped the signal and straight I applied my brake and he came and banged on my on the front wheel of my and we fell down i i fell down along with the bike there and there is but savio got flung about a meter away because he was sitting behind and he had he had my phone and his phone in with him so he's he couldn't have a, uh, hold the bike and suddenly when 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 the action took place the cops came then picked us up and all and caught all of the guy the other guy who had uh, broken the signal and then i asked are you okay he says yes peter what luck i uh, i was wearing a helmet my head banged onto the road so badly that little impact i could i could hear like you know that 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 a bike that he had banged the uh, and i said praise god i said everything is fine even the bike is fine nothing is gone wrong except that uh, then the cops came caught all of that guy and asked them maybe also waited over there then he said okay, we have we have to go to the police station to file a case he was a young boy i told him say as it is not the way you should ride and break the signal i said just imagine i said if, if we had if given even, even my other colleague savio had not had an helmet what would have been he would have been behind bars today there would have been a big big uh, accident today 
And then I said, no, forget it. And I said, I left and I came back. And it's gone. That's it. Peter, you are saying that had the helmet not been worn that day, Savio would probably have had a very major head injury from Yes, but I don't know what. Something something told me that same morning, Peter, carry your second habit, which is there and give it to him. I praise God. I think the Spirit of the Lord came and told me, Peter, there is a helmet, take it and give it. So we don't want to take. And that's how probably the first time he wore a helmet. Although for last one month, we've been traveling on a bike up and down. I mean, not from last one month, from say from August onwards. Okay, before the accident, one month before that. We've been traveling up and down from because he stays in Andheri itself. So it's just have to just pick him up and sometimes I drop him also. So I like to thank and praise God and nothing really went wrong to either of us. We both of us were safe because of this help. So Peter, tell me one thing. All this time in Bombay, pillion riders, even here in Goa, pillion riders don't wear a helmet. But that particular morning, you both were wearing a helmet. Yes. Accident took place. And exactly the head of Savio hit the, hit the road, but nothing happened that to him happened because to. you were guided by the Spirit of God to both wear helmets that day because yes. the enemy was after you all to attack you and to get something damaged. But see the Spirit of God, how he protected you. Yes. Not only Great he protected God. you, protected, protected Savio as well. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Praise now, God. Now, 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 now Peter... I know that, you know, we can all say that, you know, Savio got saved, the scooter did not get damaged. You all also showed mercy to that boy. That's what you said earlier, I believe, right? You said that yes. you showed mercy to him. No case, just let him go. No, okay. nothing really happened. But what I'm asking you is, what would have really been the situation had you not really been with the word? Had you really not been, you know, connected to the word? Or you really never had a relationship with Jesus? Would, the, would you really have thought that even though if you had a helmet, would there be protection? I mean, something worse could have happened, isn't it? Absolute. Absolute. Even something you know, worse could have happened. Yeah. And when In you fact, I was about, just thinking, I was just thinking, if I had not applied the brake and if I tried to move, probably he would have banged the backside and probably maybe injured Savio's leg and throw both of us at you know, a better distance. Because it really happened that only the front tire uh, uh, banged each other. He was he was in a he was in a great speed. I think around forty to fifty. Well, I was only around ten because I just had to turn from the signal, move ahead. So my 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 speed was not much. So I applied the brake, and that's what. So he, so he headlong. He came in with a headlong courage and straight onto your front tire. Yes, I mean he came from the left hand side. Okay, and for us also because I have taken a turn. I mean, so I take a turn, go, I was supposed to go straight. Suddenly on the left, I saw his coming, broke the signal, jumped the signal and he came straight. So both our front uh, uh, got uh, uh, banged each other. Isn't it the angels of God protecting you at this such a crucial juncture? Such a protection from the Lord. Just such a protection for one Savio. And you know what? I, I don't know about Savio, whether Savio, and I met Savio here when he had come to Yeah, Savio, thank you, yes. Yeah, but I have no idea whether Savio also has been being, he's also being fed with God's word by you and, and in the office. I don't know. Yes, yes. Whenever he's, we are in the office, my, my, my phone is always on at four o'clock. You must have, you must have seen most of the time I'm, I'm going out and coming in because the line gets disconnected as okay. the office work is going on over there. Praise God. Praise God. So, so now that you got connected, the whole office has got connected. Savio also got connected. And he also now was able to receive that protection, especially in this difficult time. Angels of God came and protected Savio also in this difficult time. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? That all those who are connected with us, when we are connected with the Lord and connected with his word, we also receive that immunity. We also receive that protection from the Lord. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Peter, for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really powerful, especially when you realize what God is doing in our life. Okay. Is there anybody else, my dear sister and brothers, who would like to share? Because we had three or four sharers in the beginning and they've all finished. And I know some of you joined in later. Anybody would like to share any testament? Anyone has got something to share? This is your opportunity to share the goodness of the Lord. 
anybody. Praise God. Remember, any little thing God has done in our life, sometimes, you know, we want to wait for the, for the big miracles and the big signs and wonders. But, you know, God is, the very fact that, you know, we are breathing, the very fact that, you know, we are alive, the very fact that, you know, we can come to and give glory to God is itself, you know, a testimony of the goodness of God. That, you know, we are still able to experience his love, his mercy, his protection, his goodness every single day of our life. And, you know, my brothers and sisters, every time we get an opportunity to testify to the goodness of God, we should never miss an opportunity because that is an opportunity for us to bear fruit. That is an opportunity for us to sow the seed. For somebody hearing out there, your testimony is being touched and realizing, oh, I can relate to what that's happening and maybe that's my solution to my problem. Amen? So anybody, anybody would like to share something? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. If so, nobody has got anything to share. You know, my sister and brothers, um, uh, today, as they say, we said that, you know, we want to only have testimonies today. But um, what I really wanted to share also with you all was, you know, partly about what the gospel says today. You know, the gospel of today is talking about the rich man having an encounter with Jesus. And that's what we, we, we studied today in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 30. You know, there's a rich young man who came to Jesus, asking Jesus the question. He's saying to Jesus, Lord, good master, good teacher, what must I do? To inherit eternal life. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And you know, my dear sister and brothers, when that man, that rich man asked the question to Jesus, what he had to do, it was a perfect question because Jesus had still not gone to the cross. Remember, this was a question asked by a rich man to Jesus, a man very wealthy, but this was before Jesus had achieved the complete salvation for the whole human race, before he had gone to the cross. So the question the rich man asked Jesus of what he had to do in order to inherit eternal life, and we asking the Lord today the same question, what must I do? To inherit eternal life can never be the same question. You know, for the for that for that young man to ask Jesus, what must I do? It was perfectly okay because he lived in the era of the law. It was all about doing. They had not to do this, they had not to do that, they had to do this, they had to do that, they had to go on the Sabbath day, they had to fast, they had to pray, they had to give alms. All those things were part of the law. But when we look at it from the other side of the resurrection, that is what we are living right now. We can never ask God the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Our question should not be that way. What we only need to do is, we need to know what Jesus did for you and me on the cross. What Jesus did for you and me on the cross. And you know, we were just hearing the testimony of Sister Joyce. She said she has experienced the love of God and she wants to share that love with somebody. She, last time she said she met an Aborigine. Now she met an Afghan person. Now she meets somebody, different people on the street and she wants to share that love with them. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, you and I today don't have to do anything to inherit eternal life. We simply need to receive the unconditional love of God. And how do we receive the unconditional love of God? through receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we realize what Jesus has done for you and me on the cross, how he paid it all on the cross for us, how he died in your place and my place, how he became a substitute for us. Now we can relate to what God has done, how we have received that love. Now, once we are filled with that love, we simply want to share that love with others. My sister Anna, she received the love of God. She received the love of Christ. She wants to go out and share this love with her student, with the family. 
does it stop only with us? No. We are all called to be a blessing in the lives of others. What about uh, Peter? My brother Peter. He is taking his colleague to work. When he goes to his... Uh, if he only sticks to an employee-employer relationship, then all he has to do is get the work done from his employees, pay them a salary, and end of the story. He doesn't need to go beyond that. But he uses his office in order to always share the word. I, whenever I go to his office, he's always playing the, 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 the gospel music. When it's come to four o'clock, the, 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 the Zoom is, is, is so audible for everybody to hear. So everybody is listening to the word of God. If you and I can become a blessing in the same way to in, in the lives of others, maybe in the lives of our own family, in the lives of our extended family, in the lives of our neighborhood, in our community, how much will each one begin to experience that love? And how much we can share that love with others. In the same way, the, the rich young man at that time did not know this truth. He wanted to know what he had to do in order to be saved. What he had to do in order to receive eternal life. And therefore, my sister and brothers, when Jesus told him, young man, I want you to do what the law says. Love your parents. Obey the Lord your God. Do not steal, do not murder, everything that was in the law. And he turns around to Jesus and he says to Jesus, Lord, all these things from my childhood I've been doing. And you know, my sister and brothers, we all know that nobody has ever been able to fulfill the law except for Jesus. That means this young man, what he was telling Jesus was not the truth. He was lying to Jesus. But what does Jesus do to him? Do you think Jesus tells him, you are a liar? You would never have done that. Jesus just loved him and he says, if you really want eternal life, there is one thing I want you to do. Sell everything you have because your God is your money and come and follow me. And you know, my dear sister and brothers, all what I shared with you was not what I wanted to tell you. And what I want to tell you right now is this. Every time somebody came to Jesus, whether they came for healing whether they were prostitutes, whether it was, you know, Mary Magdalene from whom the devils were removed, that prostitute woman who came there, who was going to be stoned to death, whether they were deaf people, whether they were dumb people, whether they were blind people, whether they were people who were even dead. Lazarus was raised from the dead. The widow's son was raised from the dead. Anybody who came to Jesus always left the presence of Jesus with joy, always left the presence of Jesus with victory because they had experienced something with Jesus. But look at the encounter of this rich young man. He came there with such enthusiasm. He never came there, you know, as, as though he wanted something from Jesus. He came there to ask Jesus what he had to do in order to inherit eternal life. And when finally Jesus gave him the answer, the word of God tells us that he went from the place of Jesus extremely sad. He left the, 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 the very place where Jesus was extremely broken, extremely sad. And it says because he was very wealthy. This is the only place in the New Testament where you hear somebody came to Jesus and he left from Jesus' presence absolutely sad. He left away completely broken. And you know, my dear sister and brothers, many of us, I don't know. I hope none of us are like that rich man. But nobody who ever came to Jesus ever left his presence sad or left his place, place, place empty-handed if they really believed in him. And that's why when we experience the love of God, we experience that, you know, that grace of God, we experience God's mercy because God is not looking at our past to give us a new future. He's simply looking at us as we are. If we show interest to him, we show, you know, that we really desire him to become our Lord of our life. He's simply going to pour his love into us. And you know, my sister and brothers, we know from all the testimonies that we heard today, and I hope, you know, many of you will come in the days to come and share your testimony. The moment we come to the Lord and we experience his love, we experience his mercy. We receive something from him. Our life is never the same again. Our life changes. We always want to become the instruments or the, or the vessels of God or the ambassadors of God in order to share his love and share his goodness to everybody we meet. Amen? Is that right? And that's why we simply need to you know, ask the Lord to make us that instrument, to make us those vessels 
so that we can reach out to others with his love because we can only love others with the love that we have received from Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And every time we come to the Lord, we come to hear his word. You know, as soon as we hear his word, we should be so excited. We should be so enthusiastic. We should say, Lord, I understood it. I want to share it with somebody. I've understood the secret. I've understood the recipe, how to make this cake. I've understood now how to, you know, live a victorious life. I, I can't keep my mouth shut. I want to tell this good news to somebody else. I want to share this to somebody else so that they also can be blessed and they also can receive their miracle. You know, my dear sister and brothers, it's a privilege for us. It's really a privilege for each one of us to become members of the body of Christ, to become, you know, subjects of God's kingdom. And the moment we receive something, you know, unlike, you know, people of this world, when they receive something, they receive a promotion or they receive a, you know, they receive a lot of wealth in their day. They always want to keep it to themselves. Me, my wife, my children, my family. But when people of God who belong to the kingdom, when they receive something, they simply want to go and share it out with others. They want to give the secret to others. They want to give the recipe to others. They want to share the love to others because that is rooted from receiving God's love. That is all rooted from receiving God's love. And that's all, you know, the, the whole faith is based on this one foundation of God's love. The moment we receive something, especially from God, we want to share it with others. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So anybody before we close for today, anybody else has got something to share? Anybody wants to share the goodness of the Lord? Anyone wants to give a testimony or say what the I Lord I want is? to share. Yes, Sister after Verena, your, go ahead. Yes, please do. I want to share because like my dad lived that kind of love, like because he was very generous. He was sharing the word of God in the uh, parish and on the community. Uh -huh and the family um so like um he was such a good example of like sharing god's love in his life i mean obviously everybody has his faults but like <laughs> my my grand my grandmother was saying she never like met somebody who is sometimes not so friendly but so helpful <laughs> But because he was like driven by God's love, I know that because when I when I cleared his apartment, they, I found a big book um, where which I'm sure at least he read maybe if he didn't read all of it, but he read parts of it how how to guy um how to do a, and how to have a Christian marriage, and I'm sure he based his values on this, like how to follow Christ. And yeah, so a lot of his life reflected God's love, I think. So it's God. Yeah, it's I just God. want to thank God that he gave me the opportunity, even though I couldn't join him this year again before he died. But at least last year I was there for like four months and couldn't observe again my parents and spend time with them. But also this year, like I also want to thank God god that he gave me the opportunity to join my family and like celebrating my dad's life praise god praise god and that and the reason why you left canada and went on two occasions back to germany was only because you received that love from your father you received god kind of love and you always wanted to share that love back to your own family amen amen praise god praise god praise god, praise god. thank you jesus Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. So, Jesus. Sister Verena, why don't you do a closing prayer? Let, let's let, let's end the session. I want you to do a closing prayer for us. Go ahead. Thank you, God, Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we received a, a lot of uh, testimonies which um, uh, are increasing um, our faith and which helps us to proclaim the good news your good news into the world and let us be strengthened from those testimony, testimonies in our lives so that we can spread the word and that people can experience the kingdom of heaven already on earth thank you in the name of the father son and the holy spirit
Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Beautiful. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.